So let's take a look at problem 680. This is on page 305 in your text. So they want us to determine the moment of inertia of the composite area about the x-axis. So we'll be using the formula I sub X equals I bar sub X plus A times DY squared. In this case, we said DY is the distance from the centroidal axis to the parallel axis we're working on. In this case, the given x-axis. We'll say that, the given x-axis. So we have three composite shapes here. We can look at it that way. So drawing the problem, the y-axis and x-axis. We can look at this as a large triangle, a small triangle, and a square. So we'll call the small triangle segment one, the square segment two, and the large triangle segment three. So using this formula, we can calculate the moment of inertia of each of these segments about the x-axis using this parallel axis theorem. So going to appendix B, and this is on page 814 through 815. For a triangle, you look at the rightmost columns, the area of moment of inertia. For a triangle, this is given by I sub X is 136 base height cube. For a rectangle, I sub X is 112 base height cube. So using that, I'll redraw the problem right quick. We're modeling it as a large triangle, small triangle, and a rectangle. So we look at segment one. which is a triangle. So our moment of inertia is 136 times the base, which is three inches times the height cube. Don't forget the cubit. Plus the area of that triangle, which is one half the base times the height times dy squared. Now, dy is the distance from the x-axis to the centroid of that segment. And that centroid of that segment, we know, is a third. So that would be the 3 inches plus a third of 3 inches, 4 inches. And it's 4 inches squared. Moving on to segment two, which is the rectangle or the square, from appendix B, the formula is 112 base times height cube plus the area A, which is base times height. Now the centroid here for a rectangle, we know for this composite, this part of the composite shape, this segment is in the center. So if this total height is three inches, that would be 1.5 inches. So that'd be 1.5 inches 
squared. And then lastly, we have to consider the larger triangle segment three. Once again, the moment of inertia of the area for a triangle is one over 36 from appendix B times the base, which is six inches times the height cube, which is six inches cubed plus the area, half the base, which is six inches times the height, six inches times the distance from the given X axis to the centroidal axis of this segment. The centroid for a triangle we know is a third. So a third of six using appendix B formulas would be two inches. So that'd be two inches squared. Doing this math, you get I sub X is 209 inches to the four, which is what we expected for our units. So it checks out. Take a look at another problem. Six eighty one. Very similar problem here. Same page. But here they are looking for the moment of inertia instead of the x axis, which we just did, they wanted about the y axis. So I'll form the I sub Y equals to I bar sub Y plus the area times DX squared. So once again, Y axis, X axis, segment one, segment two, segment three. We can model this composite shape as a smaller triangle, segment one, a square, segment two, and a larger triangle, segment three. Well, then IY, we have to, using our appendix B, moment of inertia for an area for a triangle. We know it's using our appendix B formula, 136 base height cube, and for a rectangle, it's 1 12th base height cube. And we'll use that for our I bar sub Y. That's from appendix B on page 815 to 816. Height base cube for a rectangle. So I sub y for the smaller triangle segment one will be one thirty six times the base of the smaller triangle, which would be three inches. times the height, which would be three inches, cubed, plus the area, which is half the base, times the height, times dx, which is the distance from the given y-axis, to the 
location of the centroid in the x direction. So for which would be y prime. So if our y, given y axis is here, then our for segment one, the y prime axis is runs through a third of the segment one. So this is a triangle on the larger side. And this distance here is dx. So then that dx is the distance from the giving y axis to the centroid of the segment one which in this case would be a third of three on the larger side, so two inches squared. It's a, remember, it's a coordinate, a location away from the y-axis. So that centroid is located two inches from the given y-axis. All right, for segment two here, That'll be one twelfth times the height, which is three inches, times the base cube. This is a square plus the area, base time height, three inches times three inches times the location of the centroid, four squares right in the center. So it's half of three, 1.5 squared. Now for the larger triangle, segment three, using our appendix B formula, that'd be 136 times the base, which is six inches. times the height, six inches cubed, plus the area, which is half the base, times the height, times the location of the center of this segment, which we know runs this way, so you have to take into account the three inches plus a third of six, which will give you five inches. So the Y prime, which is the location of the centroid X away from the given Y, X distance away from the Y, given Y axis, we have to take into account the three inches plus a third of the width of the larger triangle. So a third of six is two, plus since it's the location, we have to take into account the three inches away. So three inches plus two inches gives you five inches. Five inches squared. Doing this math, you get IY, give you 533 inches to the four.